Hey, John Dow, the conversation coach. Let's talk about this old Munenori Kawasaki interview over here. Let's talk about his English. Now, I'm not a baseball fan and I'm not really familiar with him, but this popped up on my recommended videos. You know how the YouTube algorithm works. And I thought it was a good video to dissect. Not only is it short, pretty quick, um, and pretty good example of a lot of things, he really reminds me of a lot of the clients that I work with. And so lately when I've been making this video push to give grammar points or speaking tips, I really try to call and pull from the people I'm actually working with. So not just concept and ideas that sound good in theory, what I'm actually working on with real people. And as awesome as it would be to maybe showcase a client in a YouTube video, I don't want to put the pressure on them. You know, they, they've been really gracious and uh, willing to work with me. They usually are still really shy and apprehensive. They don't want to be put in the spotlight that way. But Kawasaki's English speaking, it hits a lot of uh, similar notes on what I try to focus on. And, you know, there's levels and layers. I don't want to turn this into just a straight out English lesson necessarily, but um, you have two broad spectrums, right? You have people who are trolling and making fun of his English, but luckily a lot of the comments in this YouTube video, uh, I'll be sure to link it in the description later, um, they're pretty supportive. And a lot of people are showing admiration, respect, maybe for some other people who don't speak English well, this is really inspiring. And that's awesome. But what I try to do when I'm working with people is just make sure that we give options. Don't look at things as simple, black and white, correct or incorrect, but not only do you have one way to say something, you have multiple ways of saying something. So with that pretext out of the way, let's go through this video. And, you know, it's great that he's actually very confident and his voice is really good. But some of the phrases he uses, just very small minor adjustments that can be made. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it uh, one step at a time. Muni, how happy are you to be back here wearing the big blue J on your chest? Yeah, thank you very much. I'm very happy. I'm fun. I'm exciting. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much. Um, grammatically, no problem with that English, but with his personality, his tone, his style, you could probably say thanks a bunch. Um, he, and then he says, I'm fun. I'm exciting. That's where it starts to drop off and it sounds a little bit more broken English. Um, probably what he would want to say and says instead of just I'm fun I'm having a lot of fun I'm having a lot of fun instead of I'm exciting it's exciting it's really exciting so piecing that all together hey thanks a bunch uh, I'm having a lot of fun it's really exciting you sound excited yeah every day exciting oh. yeah every day exciting every day's a very small apostrophe s so when native speakers add that apostrophe s for a non-native speaker they probably don't even pick up on it they don't even hear it that's why they're not replicating it but not every day exciting every day's exciting every day is exciting every day is exciting oh it was pretty cold in buffalo and now you come here yeah. it's pretty cold here is that hard for you to play when it's cold yeah i was in buffalo so really quick right here this small pause this is nothing okay um, it's very easy to over analyze and over critique with an interview but we all face this type of moment and for people who are learning English or they're dealing with public speaking or any kind of speech presentation when you go through this moment of this slight pause it kills you as a speaker but from an outside perspective I'm, I promise you it's nothing two days ago no Buffalo very cold but more cold Minnesota. Okay, so that part right there, more cold Minnesota. Honestly, I don't know which perspective he's trying to go with. Is he trying to say Buffalo's colder than Minnesota or maybe Minnesota's colder than Buffalo? But either way, more cold, just switch that to colder. And, you know, it, all you have to do to clarify is you would just repeat. So these two things that you're comparing, just repeat it again. Unbelievable. Your English is getting very good. You've been really practicing, haven't you? Yeah, I have book. I'm every day. 
study English. So, I have a book. Um, I have a book. Okay, you know, a slight adjustment there with the article. But honestly, you know, what, what would be better to say? If you want to sound really confident, really, really relaxed, I've been hitting the books. You know, I've been reading books every day. Some, some more actionable verb instead of I have book. Okay? Study every day. I like study English because uh, I stud I'm I have teacher Gogo Roger Batista. You learning Spanish too? Spanish, yes, yeah, Spanish too. Every so this yes with agreements, you know that comes from the Japanese cultural effect of saying hi, uh, acknowledging each point. But in English, you really don't have to do that. So instead of um, feeling that you have to supplement it with something to say. Just keep going on with conversation. You can nod. You can actually hold back with your response. Every day, talking. Every day, I need practice. I need practice English. You know, you know what I mean. Because you have to teach your son when he starts to talk. Uh, yeah, my son is a uh, my son Kanak. He speaks English. Maybe. So that maybe, I know it comes from the Japanese phrase tabun or kamoshiranai. So my son, my son speaks English instead of maybe, probably the better English word here would be probably, but the rhythm, it's a longer word than maybe, harder to pronounce. So that's what's happening right there, most likely. Tabun. Maybe. Right now, he's probably not saying much though, right? Yeah, yeah. He's my, you know. <laughs> but that's in English, right? Yeah. Uh, How do you say that in Japanese? Uh, Japanese? What, you, what your son says, those noises, how do they sound in Japanese? Same thing? Yeah, same thing. Yeah, Japanese. Isho, <laughs> Isho, Japanese. Only. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you very much. I'll be back. So again, very charismatic, very confident. Uh, that thank you very much, thanks a bunch. Or I appreciate it, even if you really wanted to switch it up. Um, what, what was that other thing he said at the very end there? Thank you very much. I'll be back. I'll Draft be back. Kings. Oh, hey, DraftKings. Okay, well, there was another thing that he, he said at the end there, but um, I don't know. Maybe I can revisit it. The... Whoops. Hey, lingering. Don't need you. In conclusion... What, what else can we pull from Kawasaki there? Taking your time with how you speak. Oh, the, the other vocal point that I wanted to say. It was cool to see that his vocal register still stayed low. I know for a lot of male Asian speakers that when they're speaking English, maybe in their native language, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, they actually have a deep voice. But when they speak English, it shifts up and part of that's due to lack of confidence, nervousness, but I think something gets lost in translation where they hear English and they hear it's like more dynamic. So it's like, oh, gotta be friendly, you have to sound higher, but try to keep it lower. And Kawasaki-san is a really good example of that. So just fumbling through here. Uh, questions, comments, you let me know. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't like it so much, thumbs down. Uh, I'd appreciate any comments on how to do this better or any other celebrities or other videos you'd recommend that maybe I should talk through. And you can always reach me on Twitter, C-O-M-M-D-A-O, calm down, let's talk.